An earthquake with an estimated magnitude of 5.6 jolted Fukushima Prefecture in northeastern Japan on Thursday. The meteorological agency says the quake occurred at around 7.05 p.m. local time with its focus off the coast of Fukushima Prefecture. The agency says there was no tsunami. The tremor registered a maximum intensity of 5 plus on the Japanese scale of 0 to 7. Tokyo Electric Power Company says so far there has been no problem with its operation to stabilize the reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The utility also says no changes have been observed in data on radiation levels measured at monitoring posts near the crippled plant. Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant can be viewed as being a step closer to a st state of a cold shutdown. Tokyo Electric Power Company announced on Thursday that the temperature with the number two reactor largely remained below 100 degrees Celsius, bringing the mercury below the 100 degree mark at all three troubled reactors. But TEPCO still faces challenges, such as stabilizing the cooling systems before a state of cold shutdown can be achieved. 100 degrees is a benchmark temperature for a cold shutdown, which is a goal for step two of TEPCO's plan to contain the nuclear disaster. The government is aiming to achieve a cold shutdown by the end of this year. Under normal circumstances, a cold shutdown can be reached when reactors are halted safely and the water inside drops below 100 degrees. But since the Fukushima plant has suffered nuclear fuel meltdowns, the criteria are somewhat different. That's why a cold shutdown has been redefined as bringing the temperatures at the bottom of the crippled reactors to below 100 degrees. Another requirement is curbing the release of radioactive substances so that additional human exposure near the plant can be limited to one millisiever per year or less. We are satisfied that all three troubled reactors are below 100 degrees. It's very important to maintain this situation permanently. One of the hurdles to achieving the cold shutdown is the presence of contaminated water. Water must be continuously injected into the reactors to keep them cool. But this produces 550 tons of radioactive water each day, which must be decontaminated. An expert points out another major hurdle. One hundred degrees is only a benchmark point, and achieving this does not mean the reactors are safe. Another major earthquake and tsunami could strike, and the water cooling systems could suddenly stop working. If this happens, it's vital that the cooling process is resumed quickly before additional melting occurs. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, an independent team of experts, will soon start investigating the accident at that plant. Members of the lower house of the Diet passed the bill on Thursday that outlines what the new panel will be able to do. The legislation won unanimous support. It gives the Diet the power to assemble a 10-member team of experts. This panel will work separately from the government's investigation and verification committee, which was set up back in May. 
It will have the authority to summon witnesses and demand the submission of documents to clarify the cause of the Fukushima accident. The independent panel must submit a report to the Diet in six months. The bill to set up the team of experts is expected to pass the upper house on Friday. Salmon fishing season has started in one of the disaster hit areas in northeastern Japan. The port of Miyako suffered extensive damage by the tsunami in March. Around 400 salmon were unloaded at the port on Thursday. Female fish sold for six to eight dollars a kilogram in auctions, about the same as in an average year. Miyako boasts the largest salmon haul in Japan's main island of Honshu. But so far, this autumn's catch is about half the usual amount. It's partly because debris on the seabed left by the tsunami is limiting the area where fishermen can set up their nets. Higher water temperatures than usual are also to blame. Miyako is a city known for salmon. Without the fish, we won't have vigor back in the port. The salmon fishing season will peak in November.